In this video, I want to talk a lot about Jordan Peterson and what he has taught me about alpha males, about girls, about risk taking, about testosterone. What Jordan Peterson has taught me. He has been probably the highest influence on my life in the last two years. Before it was other people, Gary V, uh, you know, the RSD guys, Elliot, all those guys were in the past. Jordan Peterson is probably the number one influence on my life right now and in the last two years. So let me talk about what he has taught me. So Jordan Peterson, alpha males and testosterone. What the fuck do we know and what the fuck have I learned from him? First and foremost, the top guys get everything. There's a male dominance hierarchy. Jordan Peterson always talks about it. I'll get into all of this soon with the myths and all the stories and stuff. But essentially, the top five, ten percent, maybe even less, maybe one percent of men get everything. Girls, money, power, influence, sex, food, everything. That's just how it is. That's how society is. There's a square root law that I learned from Jordan Peterson. You might like this. Take the number of people in a company or an organization or anything. The square root of that will do half of the work. So if you have 10,000 people in your company, the square root of 10,000 is 100. 100 people do half the work. It's that crazy. It's a winner take all world, motherfucker. If you don't do it, if you don't transform, if you don't become alpha, you're gonna stay very, very low. It's just like that. That's how human beings are. That's why capitalism works. That's why communism and socialism and Marxism and Bolshevikism and all that shit never worked. That's why Russia is so behind America today. That's why America is surging ahead. That's why China is surging ahead. Capitalism, motherfucker. That's how the world works. It was there at the caveman times. It's there right now. It will always be there. Go look, go read Yo Yuval Noah Harari. Read Sapiens. Read Homo Deus. Go watch any person out there who is a world leader in thinking and, and philosophy and understanding and power. They'll always tell you a small percentage of people will take everything. You know, when machine learning becomes commercial and robots are running everything, guess what? Most of the world will be useless. And then you might need universal basic income and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, places like America, who are ruling in the AI department, will rule the world. It's like the nuclear arms race during the Cold War. Now we have the AI arms race. It's real, man. If you haven't read Sapiens or Homo Deus, you haven't read Ho no Nova, uh, uh, I always say, uh, Yuval Noah Harari, these guys like really, really learn shit, and especially Jordan Pearson. So now let's get into the unknown. One, two, three, four, five, seven things I want to cover. First, the men who go for the unknown get everything. Think of basketball, for example. When I was a kid playing basketball, I always had this thought in my mind. Why is it that some guys can drive in and some guys are pussies and just take outside shots and they never drive in and then they don't win because the person against them knows how to guard them. Because if you're always taking outside shots, they know you're not gonna go inside, you're a pussy. You're not gonna drive in. They're gonna cover you that way and then you're weak. But if you can drive in, the unknown because remember when you drive in you don't know what's gonna happen and you can take outside shots you have power you come from a position of strength so that unknown the top guys man you know the guys who throw the long passes you know, guys like Tom Brady who've won the most championships in NFL history guys like Bill Belichick who do all these weird fucking plays and moves and all this creative shit into the unknown these are the guys who win, the creative guys, okay? So this is the first thing I wanna cover. In my life, I've tried my best to always be into the unknown. You know, the RSD, just like a week later, man, a week after I graduated from PhD, I moved to Vegas to pick up girls. Tyler tells me to go to Elliott Hulse and learn weight training. I just fucking drive from California to Florida and train with Elliott for eight months and live at the gym. I lived at the gym, man. Do you understand 5 a.m. hip hop starts, I have to wake up, you know, at night, uh, uh, sometimes I would hear like 
people fucking up up on the on the top floor. I won't say who, but you can guess who those strength camp coaches were at the time. They were fucking, and I was like, fuck, man, I can't even sleep. I had problems with my cornea, my left cornea, and I needed to take oxycodone, which is like a prescribed drug, uh, opioid, and I had to take like I had to pay thirty dollars a pill for that. I was like a drug addict taking oxycodone, and I was living at the gym. It was, it was hot. It was humid. It was horrible sometimes the ventilation was off sometimes the AC didn't work this was July August in Florida hot fucking place and I was there man I was there I could have had a job six-figure job in SF I had multiple offers I could have gone to Harvard Medical School and done a postdoc there with Marge Livingstone or David Hubel or Rick Bourne any of those guys who were bosses of my boss I could have had a job anywhere I could have gone to MIT but none of that's the unknown I know how to do experiments. I know how to be a scientist. I know how to do good academically. It's not the unknown, it's easy. So I chose the unknown path. Starting a business from scratch, being an entrepreneur, putting in the grind, doing internships for free, traveling the world. Going into, I went to Colombia with just my phone, just my fucking phone. I didn't take any luggage, just clothes and my phone. And I bought clothes when I got there. And I wore the same thing for, for what, two months. I bought three pairs of shirts, three pairs of pants, and I wore that for two months there and I shaved my head <laughs> um, I mean fuck man get your ass into the unknown that's what you need to do so that's one really really important see Jordan Peterson talks about this thing about the belly of the beast he says you have to face your dragon when you go into the dragon it's the belly of the beast to beat the dragon right you have to become the dragon Right, this this concept of the dark side, you know, to have one step, you know, Taoism. When you think of Taoism, it's have one step in 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 reality, in your persona, and then have one step on the dark side, your shadow, and walk the earth like that every second. This is another thing I learned from Jordan Peterson. So if you look at, for example, scientists, you know, when they discover something, the greatest discoveries out there, they're serendipity. It's research. You don't know what you're searching for. You're just going out there. And this, I did this during my PhD. My main PhD research was based on something I found by accident. I wasn't even looking for that. And I was poking around in area MST, which is a motion area here in the back of the brain. And I found these cells that were component cells. And, and, and then we did this LFP measurements and, and figured out that the LFP comes from far away areas and nearby areas and different bands represent different signals. It was unbelievable finding, serendipity. You know, I was in the faculty of 1000 recommended, got into the news, published in the Journal of Neuroscience and PNAS, these top journals. I did all that. It was all serendipity. I wasn't even fucking looking for it. That's the unknown. When you go do something, if you know nothing about it, that's the fun of it. That's the unknown. Um, extreme risk for transformation. This is the second thing I want to cover. Um, Jobs, Steve Jobs, who basically created the most profitable company in the history of the world, Apple, was a dick to his employees. He didn't give a fuck. It, it wasn't like he was trying to be a dick. He just didn't care about pleasing people. He did what he wanted to do. That's who he is, who he was. You look at a guy like Elon Musk, he says, work 100 hours a week. Because if someone's working 50 hours a week, you're working twice as much, you'll be twice as successful. At least, if not more. Because these things tend to climb up exponentially. You have to be very, very extreme. Workaholic. You know, Jordan Peterson has this video about women want workaholic men. <laughs> if you want to get really good at something, man, you got to work for it. It's that simple. Um... The third thing is about sacrifice. Jordan Peterson talks about pick your own sacrifice. Five years ago, I was going to Jamaat Khan every day. This is our mosque, you know, like a prayer hall. I was going there every single day, sometimes twice, twice a day. And I consciously made a decision that I will stop going. I will stop praying. I basically figured out that this is a sacrifice I must make because at the time I'm giving to Jamaat Khan, to prayers, to religion, is taking out of the time I need to give to other things like girls and having sex and making money and looking better and caring about this and that. So I made that sacrifice. The one thing I learned from Jordan Peterson is if you don't pick your own fucking sacrifice, the world will 
tell you what to sacrifice and it will make you sacrifice shit you don't want to sacrifice. So pick your own sacrifices and give up things that are not good for you. Um, yeah, so what is that? Gir you and the girls, the money, the cars, you want all that shit? Okay, give up porn, give up weed, give up alcohol. Give that shit up. Sacrifice these vices, this garbage, toxic poison in your life. Throw it away today. Go extreme. Forget about it. Fourth thing out of seven. Only a fool can be a master. You must do things which you know nothing about. Be a fucking fool. Go out there. Be foolish. Job said it. Be foolish. Be hungry. Very, very, very important. Fifth thing. Leadership. The high testosterone and leadership skills come from two things. And again, this is something I learned from Jordan Peterson. Vision and voice. You must have a vision of the future and you must be able to articulate it with your voice. These are the two steps of being a leader and of, of expressing your high testosterone self. So the vision you will have through experiences, putting yourself out of the comfort zone, reading, writing, talking, understanding, watching, listening, experiencing, meditating, being still. And the voice you express through videos, through talking, through writing. These are the two steps of being a leader. Sixth, high testosterone is from aggressiveness. You gotta be aggressive. Wall Street traders who take big risks, which are calculated risks, we measured their testosterone. You measure it in the morning, you measure it in the evening. The guys with the highest testosterone in the morning make the most money. They take the most calculated risks. It's that simple. Be aggressive. And last, um, women just pick from the top of the hierarchy. It doesn't fucking matter how you struggled or your dumbass story or your, your crybaby isms. No one cares. Get to the top and you will get picked. And then you can pick if you want. But you don't have to struggle. Get to the top, motherfucker. And testosterone specifically, if you want free books, you want to learn how to increase it to get to Superman levels, to get to Alpha levels, all the links are below in the description. Go read them. Go read these books, man. Amazon bestsellers. People have spent hundreds of dollars for this material. I'm giving them to you for free. Go read it, learn it. I've been doing the same, following the same procedure. Hundreds of guys who I've coached have followed the same procedures. All the hundreds of thousands of dollars I've spent on my personal development is all in those books. Go read it and go learn from it, starting increasing your testosterone right now. If you wanna learn more about the Aphrodite Academy, that's also in the links below. Go see the transformations, go read about the ingredients, go read about the benefits, how we make this stuff, how it's changing the world. Yeah, man, just have a balance between learning to accept who you are and experiencing the unknown so you discover more of who you are. It's the best way, man. Don't be safe. Don't be comfortable. Always seek out the unknown around you and go into it deep. That's how you will grow. That's how you will learn about yourself. All right, man. Love you.